Okay, let's do some more advice letters. They are pouring in. So I'm like, oh shoot, I better I better do some of these letters because they're just really, my mailbox is getting full. So I picked out a few that had to do with different relationship situations that are quite common in uh, our modern society. And uh, let's, let's start, let's just jump right in here. Question number one. So my relationship is fairly new, seven months, and I feel like I'm in a love triangle. His ex doesn't want to leave us alone. They have been apart for nine months now, yet she constantly calls and uses her daughter to get him to come to her house. The worst part is that it's not even his child. What can I do to make her leave us alone? Okay, so you've been dating him seven months, and she he's been apart from her for nine months. So that means he was like by himself for only two months, probably still dipping with her anyway, like he is now. So what this looks like, honey, is you are a rebound. You just something to do because no matter what uh, reason, excuse that she gives for asking him to come over, he has the right to say no. And since he j jumps up and goes over there every time she calls, then that tells you that's where he wants to be is over there. Now, instead of you writing me, tell, asking me what you can do to make, quote, her leave us alone, you need to understand what time it is. You are the third party in their relationship. They may be, you know, technically broken up, I don't know how, since he sees her all the time, but... Um, you know, your fairly new relationship has no history, it has no depth, it has no, no, it has nothing. Because every time this other woman calls, you know, your man leaves you or ignores you or doesn't see you or whatever to go and be over there. And so what you need to understand is um, they're not done with each other yet and she's, he, he's still attached to her. She still has his heart. So that's, I don't know what else to tell you. Um, that's a pretty simple cut and dried answer right there. So moving on to question number two. This young lady says, My son's father and I have been together since 2001. And last year we broke up because we needed space. That's always... <laughs> that's okay. Well, anyway, let me... Okay, let me finish reading this. I agreed only on the terms that this was not long term. Hmm. Just recently he told me that he has another girlfriend. I feel so lied to. All of these months we continued to see each other and he was constantly talking about how we were going to get back together. I don't want to give up. I feel like he thinks that things are happy with her right now. But I told him everything is always happy in the beginning. I don't know what to do because I want him back. Okay, first of all, first of all, let's start. My old ass Remy Martin shirt. You know, they have laws now that liquor companies can't even, and tobacco companies can't make this kind of stuff anymore. So I have some with, from cigarettes and liquor companies and stuff, and I thought I would bless you with my Remy shirt. This thing is like, I don't even know how many centuries old. But um, back to the letter. Uh, I'm looking at this, and you know, I have it up on my screen here. Um, and I'm like, okay, what do you mean you agreed? How did you agree? I mean, it's like he don't need your buy-in to leave your behind. You know what I mean? It's, he just going to walk off. I mean, but by you, quote, agreeing that it wasn't long-term, basically what you did was set yourself up to be a booty call thing for him while he, you know, built up that relationship over there. So he that's why he needed space because he wanted to go over there and investigate what could be happening with that woman who is now his official girlfriend and, you know, he's just bringing the news on you. Because he's ready to stop dibbing and dabbing with you and, you know, playing this little silly breadcrumbing game he was playing. If you don't know what breadcrumbing is, there's a video on the channel that explains it because that's what happened here. You got breadcrumbed all those months with, you know, these lies and fabrications and fantasies about getting back together with this man. He had no intention of getting back together with you unless that didn't work out. You was, the, you know, the backup plan. And, um, you know, I'm looking at you. You don't want to give up. You have to give up. I mean, you just would look like a fool, a desperate, low self-esteem, having no dignity possessing fool to keep chasing after a man who's told you he doesn't want you. He told you that to your face. He has another woman. He's happy over there with her. 
And, you know, if he wanted to be with you, then that's where he would be. So the fact that he left you and went over there, that's the sign. I mean, I know it hurts to hear this and I know it hurts to go through it. But um, you should understand that when somebody tells you that they, quote, need space, that you're breaking up. That's what that, oops, that's what that means. People try to put, you know, pretty packages on it and pretend like it means something else. But if some might see me and my phone, we, we have issues. Um, if you, you know, need space from the person that you're in a partnership with, then there's a serious problem there. You don't want to look at their face. You don't want to talk to them. You want nothing to do with them. And you might say, well, it's just for a while. But that's just sort of ease you out the door without a bunch of drama. You know, that way, you know, you, you, what's they call it? Let them down easy. That's what that's called. So in reality, you know, this was over the moment that you guys said that you needed space. So um, you have a child with this man. Yeah, you have a child with this man. So what I would suggest is that you start figuring out, you know, what to do about chasing after him. And instead, figure, start thinking about, uh, you know, some documentation regarding custody, custody, visitation, and child support. That's what you need to work out. Because the next thing, you know, he's probably going to announce that he's getting married to this woman. And then you're going to really be in a state. So you need to get, you know, tie up all those legal ends now. Protect your child as much as you can. Um, and then you close that door. Close the door to your heart and definitely close them legs. This is a no-win situation if you keep yourself involved in this. He's with someone else. Accept the reality. He's gone. You two are not together anymore. And if he comes back, like if that blows up and he tries to come back and use you for the backup plan, do not degrade yourself like that. Don't let him treat you like that. You know, you weren't his choice. He didn't want you. So for him to come back talking about, oh, well, you know, uh, 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 whatever, um, you need to, you know, just not go with that. Just tell him, well, no, let's just leave things as they are. You know, I'm on the path to healing now. Um, you know, the baby's getting every, used to everything. We're, we're just going to, you know, go in and live our lives separate from you. And good luck, goodbye, and good riddance. Okay. Now, question number three. Hey, I'm just rolling through these. That's good because it's five of them. Why do men tell you that they love you if they don't feel it? Psh, is this a real question? <laughs> I was in a relationship and my partner would tell me that he loved me all the time. But now that I've broken up with him, he says he loved me like family, not like a lover. Then he says he finds me attractive, but it was hard for him to have sex with me. I find this hard to understand. I now have this emptiness in my heart that I can't feel. I miss him. I need him, but I can't be with him. I've broken up with him several times and indicated that the reason why he got back to me was because he felt lonely. How can a man hurt a woman who cares so much for him? It's easy. Because she let herself keep being hurt. I mean, what you want me to do? I mean, the man told you he doesn't love you. Okay, that's it. That's it. You don't need to be listening to nothing else that, that he says. It should be like, ah, uh, like the Charlie Brown cartoon, the lady, you know, wah, 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 wah. That's what it should sound like to you because he's just talking shit. You know, all this stuff about, well, he loves you like family but not a lover. And that, you know, that could be, though. Because this is my own personal belief. When somebody's always telling you that they love you, they're not telling you because they feel it. They're telling you, telling it because they're trying to convince themselves that they really love you because if you do you just feel it you don't need to say it 18 times a day you know it's like you're this mantra that you're trying to you know make yourself believe hypnotize yourself into believing you know that this is how you really feel in reality they don't feel that way so um you know one good heartfelt i love you said with emotion and you know like about touching and all stuff is, is that's plenty i mean you don't if you need to hear it 97 times a day see that means you're insecure and he's just lying just feeding you you um a, a line of, of garbage nobody says that come on now um then he's saying that he finds you attractive but it was hard for him to have sex with you this another let you down easy thing he doesn't want to tell you that you know he wasn't attracted to you at all anymore physically and uh, you know it's time for him to move on so having emptiness in your heart about a situation like this you know and longing for a man who you don't 
I mean, who, who just, I mean, again, this is just like in the last case. They're, these dudes are flatly telling you, ladies, they don't want to be with you. What the hell are you doing? Why are you chasing after them and longing and wasting your emotions and time and heart and energy on somebody who told you to your face they don't want to be with you? I don't understand that. But I mean, my, my ego is too big for some bullshit like that. There's no way in this world I would even let him know that I had feelings like this. I mean, I'm hoping that you didn't. Now you let me, you know. Um, told me but don't you ever tell some man that you oh I long for you I have an emptiness in my heart uh, I miss you I can't be with you know that just sounds like some you've been reading too many Daniel Steele romance novels or some shit I don't know this no this don't make no sense and how can a man hurt a woman who cares so much for him like I said easy because he doesn't care shit about you I mean, it's, it, you, because you love him doesn't obligate him to do anything to you. It doesn't obligate him to love you back, to be with you, to kiss you at nothing, nothing. He's not obligated to do anything because you have these feelings. It's the same thing in reverse when men, you know, want to be with a woman and she's not interested. Nobody owes you anything, okay? You, the relationships have to be mutual. They have to, both people have to be engaged and interested in each other otherwise it's like some torturous slavery situation or something you're being held a prisoner of someone's emotions and that just makes no sense but you know this dude um it just sounded to me like he just wanted to have you know he just wanted to do some booty action and to continue to have access to your your resources whatever they are um, so talking about he came back because he was lonely. I'm sure there were things that he benefited from, you know, doing all this back and forth. Um, you know, you didn't go into all the details, but there would be no reason for him to do that unless there was some benefit to him. So gather your pride together, honey. Let this mess go. Just, you know, understand that, you know, people are going to do all kind of stuff if you let them. You know, but the main thing is you have to think about... Um, is this man right? Are you getting the relationship that you want from a person? I cannot say this enough. I need to like tattoo it on my head because that's the, the only thing that you guys need to think about. You know, oh, I love him. My heart is hurting. Oh, just so dramatic and shit. But the bottom line is he's not giving you the relationship that you want. He's flatly told you he's never going to because he doesn't feel you like that. So all this other stuff you're talking about, it's just wasting words. You're wasting words and you're wasting time. And, you know, I mean, you might be young and everything, but, you know, the clock is ticking. So you need to, to get your act together and move on from this. Don't be calling him and don't let him call you. Put him on block. Now, this next letter is from a young woman who got married last year. So let's see, last June. And this is what? We just started April. Okay. So she says, oh, power off. She says, I've been married since last June, and our, you know, our marriage is having a reoccurring challenge. My husband's insecure. He has trust issues from past relationships and things he's done himself. She claims that she's not a very affectionate person, but he, very, he is. He's expressed he wants more attention. I give a little to please him, but as soon as we have an argument, it's like I never tried. I must be sexing someone else. And he's in the past viewed my phone and my journal that predated him. Hmm. I have found him a counselor and he's only been there once. He displaced a lot on me, the counselor told him. I don't another problem they're having is that we don't feel I don't feel comfortable having sex when his two teen kids are in the house. I have a nine year old but she's in bed by nine PM. If I don't want to give him any, it must be because I'm getting it elsewhere. Most arguments when he's upset it's like if this or that doesn't change, the marriage is over. Or if you don't give me this or that, there's plenty of women who will. That crap pisses me off. I'm like, leave then. Wow, they, <laughs> woo, this is kind of fiery. What the hell? I've expressed my concern and he says it shouldn't matter when his kids are there. We can be intimate. I'm your husband. And she says she has one kid. It was okay, the little nine-year-old. It took me time to bring a man around her, let alone have sex when she's there. With teens around, I'm not at all comfortable. My issue is that I, and another issue is that I enjoy my space and time alone. I love his kids, but when they come, I dread it a little because they are so loud and messy. My furniture gets flipped on. Oh, you know how they do that. They kind of jump and flip onto the couch or flip into the... They don't just sit down like a normal person. So they put this explosive uh, weight onto your furniture and break it and everything. 
So she said it has food stains on it and cuticle DNA. I'm just used to being alone and taking care of my things I saved a long time to get. Okay, so those things are invaluable valuable to her and they, sh they demonstrate her hard work. Okay, I get it. I've had talks with the kids about cleaning up after themselves, but when I say something, my husband says I'm nitpicking or against his kids and he's right in front of them, which is wrong. He's creating a wedge, so she's like, I love my husband, I want to be with him, but I would really love to live alone and have my peace and quiet. I'm exhausted with dealing with his insecurities and displacement of BS on me. He won't even recognize when I'm trying. I'm leaning towards letting go, and we haven't even made it a year yet. Wow, this is a lot of stuff going on. Okay, first of all, how did you two make it to marriage without any of these issues coming up? Did you ignore them because you just wanted to be married? I cannot see how you did not know that these kids were knuckleheads and that their daddy was stupid. Now, there's no way in this world you should have teenage kids not cleaning up after themselves. They should be cleaning up the whole house because that's what you do when you have kids. They need to be doing something with themselves besides sitting on their asses, playing video games and watching television. Get your ass up, vacuum, clean some windows, clean that bathroom, change the linen on all the beds, wash those damn sheets and fold them up and put them back on the bed or you know, or what, put them away or whatever. I mean, they need to be doing some chores. And for their father to act like they should be, you know, that you're supposed to do all of that if you think it was the two able-bodied teenagers in the house? Oh, hell no. That so would not be. I'd be cussing all the motherfuckers out. Get the fuck out and get off my furniture. You want to sit on something, sit on a goddamn floor since so you act like a goddamn animal. You don't get to sit on my furniture. Get the fuck up. See, I would just turn the whole house out. They wouldn't want to come to my house. And he would probably be looking crazy too and I would not give a fuck. But, um... It, you know, this this has so many problems. Your little girl does not need to be seeing this kind of stuff. She doesn't need to be hearing this kind of stuff. If you have the kind of, of, of parental style that involves discipline and, and, you know, being responsible in the household for certain things, and she's seeing them model this behavior and get away with it, don't you think that's going to cause a lot of confusion in her head? Well, why do I have to do all this stuff? And though they don't have to do it, why are you picking on me? See, then it causes all this resentment. It's going to be a big deal. It's going to be a problem. And, um, and then they're likely to tease your child. Um, and talk, yeah, do you, ha ha, you have to, then we don't. So that's going to make her feel worse. You got to think about all this stuff. I mean, kids are stupid, and you sound like your husband is just like a tall child. Um, as far as the, the sexual activity, of course you don't feel comfortable. I mean, I mean, you know, all the sounds and things that be going on, I mean, they don't need to be hearing all of that. And I'm wondering why he's so anxious to do, especially if they're visiting. That means they don't have a space of their own, you know, like bedroom doors where they can go in and close the doors and put play their music. Whatever. They're probably in the living room and, you know, maybe just real close there. Maybe there's a guest room, but it's right by your bedroom or something like that. There has to be something, you know, going on that you didn't tell me that is making you very self-conscious about the fact that they could hear what's going on. And I don't blame you. I mean, who could relax in a situation like that? It's like they're being some kind of voyeurs and your husband is being an exhibitionist. No, hell no. No, 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 no. But the main thing here is these were all problems that existed before you said I do. I am not understanding why you ignored them. These are red flags all over the place that this was not someone that you needed to marry. And, you know, why you guys went through with it. I mean, you have your values about raising children are completely different. Your your understanding of privacy and stuff are completely different. He's like got some serious emotional baggage from these past relationships, you know, dramas that he claims he has trust issues. There's a video on his channel where I talk about if a man says he don't, he doesn't trust you, um, you know, how you should handle that. Um, there's nothing here that makes me 
see any future for this marriage. Uh, he, you know, the counselor issue, he's supposed to find his own counselor. Stop treating him like a child. Now, if he says he didn't find a counselor and he only went one time when you did, that means he doesn't want to go to a counselor. If he doesn't want to go to a counselor to fix the issues that he has as causing problems in his marriage, what does that mean? That means he doesn't want to fix the marriage, which means you, instead of writing me, should be seeing an attorney to get out of that that situation that you in and leave that fool alone leave him and his rogue ass kids alone and just you know go on and in the future you know if you decide that you want to date somebody to the point where you get married you need to have some very serious conversations about mental state and values and morals and and you know child discipline and parenting and the stuff that it seems like you guys did not talk about at all I'm just kind of amazed what the hell did you talk about when you was on your dates for you to get to advance to the point where you got married and you did not know any of these things about the man that you were marrying or you thought that they was gonna go away when you guys got married I don't know what you thought but I'm just telling you that was a mistake whatever way you wrapped your mind around this situation to go and be married with to this insecure jealous stupid talking man um, you need to make sure you don't do that ever again and probably just stay single for a bit because you you got to make sure your little girl is 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 cool and you know, we bring in, even you know, I don't know what if the teenagers are girls or boys, but you know, I'm not a fan of teenage boys around little girls. I, that to me is really bad, especially when she's sleeping in her room by herself. Oh hell no! So you good? Cause I, I would have been in the room with her and let them be with their daddy. But um, that would be my suggestion: see an attorney, talk about what options you have, especially since you two haven't even been made, married a year yet. You might be able to qualify for an annulment, depending upon the state that you live in and what the laws are there and just you know out like a Vegas card dealer all right last question oh my god there's so many of them this one is interesting I kind of skimmed it but now we're going to be reading it I'm a divorced white woman with two daughters I've been involved with a divorced black man with one son and two daughters Okay, so all together that's five kids. Damn. In fact, he and I have been living together the past three years with my son and my two daughters. His daughters stay with their mother. Blending families is difficult enough when both are of the same race, but to deal with one family being Caucasian and the other black is quite trying at times. While we have innately different parenting styles, the severe conflict enters when he always accuses me of not understanding his his like black culture and especially how I don't understand black boys and therefore I couldn't possibly have a clue how to best raise his children the reason this always comes up is because he never ever disciplines his kids they didn't have black black children they've had it so rough and therefore they have to be handled differently so it's not break their spirit these children do not know the meaning of a consequence for any bad behavior no discipline is ever enforced and not only does it reflect badly on my disciplined children it reflects badly on his giving them the message they can get away with whatever they want it breeds disrespect laziness disharmony the list goes on there's a serious issue of him always throwing the black plight in my face and making it a racial argument when it's really about disciplining children to grow up to be respectful adults Deborah, I am one of those most compassionate people when it comes to understanding what the heck what the black race has endured, but I do not understand why that becomes a focal point of our conversations each time we don't agree on the best way to parent or discipline our children. Boundaries, rules, and whatever else should have been in place between us as a cohesive parental unit has never been established and is causing all sorts of chaos, drawing in issues that shouldn't be there in the first place. Needless to say, we are at a serious impasse because I'm not respecting him as a parent and he's not respecting me as a bona fide source for child rearing. What are your thoughts? Wow. See, another another black man raising some idiot kids. This is... Especially his son. See, him not putting his son, you know, his son, teaching his son some kind of respect and discipline is setting this boy up to be uh, an inmate that's what he's doing to his own kid he's just fucking his kid up you gotta t- you know the little boy should be having rules and he should definitely have boundaries and he should definitely have learn about consequences for your behavior or he's gonna go out into the world thinking he could do and say whatever the hell he wants to and that nobody's supposed to say or do anything to him for doing it because his daddy didn't 
And this is a common problem in the black community. You know, they, they get so upset, like we're going to be talking about whenever I finish reading them 300 surveys. These guys have that kind of attitude when they interact with women uh, on the street. And because they want her phone number, they want her, you know, to talk to her. They want her to smile. They want whatever they want from her. If she says no, then it's a problem. He gets all, you know, bent out of shape and violent and all kind of crazy stuff. This is how that starts. This young man right here is being raised to be ultimately one of those types of dudes. This is terrible. This lady, I don't know. I, you know, to me, see, again, this is one of those situations where people don't talk. They don't talk about stuff that's important. They just like, oh, we're so in love. You know, we want to live together. We want to be one big happy family without considering what that means. What does that mean? How are you going to co-parent? How are you going to establish rules? What are the rules? What are the boundaries? All of that should have been decided before you guys ever called a moving company. That this 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 situation here should never have even occurred. Now, I don't know how, you know, she doesn't say how old the son is, which is kind of interesting. So, you know, it, it leaves a big question in my mind. Um, obviously, he's not a teenager, so he's still small enough that, you know, he needs boundaries and and stuff like that but um and she also doesn't say how old her girls are but i'm thinking you know just look ahead okay they've been together living together for three years and this is already the scenario now just say the boy is i don't know eight ten something now what if he's 15 or 16 with his no boundary self and he beats up on this woman or one of her daughters what's gonna happen what's that man going to do since he doesn't think his son you know, should be disciplined. What if that boy decided to molest one of her daughters? What if that boy steals something and brings the item home and you find out it was stolen? How would your, well, your the baby, his daddy, whatever you want to call him, your man, how do you think he would handle something like that? Now, this is a crime. Now, the kid has advanced to criminal acts. How would, how would he do, how would he handle that? And what if this kid goes and gets into drugs, or, you know, get your kids to take some drugs because, again, he has no boundaries. He's never learned boundaries and restraint and consequences. No one's ever taught him, so he feels like he can do whatever the fuck he want to do. And what if he, you know, does something like that? Your kids are smoking it, your kids are, kids are popping it that he brought in the house. What what you, what you guys going to do? Again, no boundaries no under no rules no structure for this kid what if his son steals your car or anybody's car and totals it what are you going to do how are you guys gonna handle that now um these situations come to mind because over the past i don't know say six eight months I've gotten advice letters that had issues like that in it where the kids did you know that kind of stuff and the stepmother or the girlfriend or whatever you know was trying to figure out how to deal with it I'm like shit the way this is how you do do you do, you get your suitcase right you get your suitcase it's your suitcase and you put your stuff in your suitcase and then you pull up that extendo handle you know that one that makes your little rolly bag roll by and then you walk out the door that's what you do is hard it's not hard you don't be involved in no bullshit like that so you know the and these kids you know without those kind of boundaries they start bringing people into the house they be stealing your stuff i mean it just escalates because they're looking for someone to stop them they're looking for someone to show that they care what happens to them so they keep pushing the envelope pushing the envelope pushing the envelope and this father would never put his son in check because of this thing he has about you know black children spirit getting broken or something instead his neck's gonna get broken when he runs up and against a cop or, or some you know other thug like dude who's not gonna be taking that mess from him his son's ain't gonna be burying that boy um i don't know i i just think this father's doing his son a great disservice um you know people parents used to spank their kids and do all kinds of stuff to really you know, we make jokes in the black community about you having to go out to the yard and get a switch and grandmama, granddaddy, somebody beating your ass with this switch. And, you know, now people are afraid to hit their kids because they think CPS is going to come and 
Um, they don't really have any expectations for them. I've noticed a lot of parents just kind of give up. They're like, you know, the kids, oh, well, you know, he just going to do it anyway. You know, I just, I don't know what to do. And then the fathers, you know, don't talk to my son like that. You know, he's a young black man. You're going to break his spirit. And so you have, you know, all these kids being raised up stupid. So for you, the bottom line is, you know, this kid is just, this kid is a lost cause. This daddy is a lost cause. And this relationship is not going to go anywhere because you have no respect for this man. So, you know, no matter how good the D is, girlfriend, you got to understand that your first, your first responsibility is to those little girls. And you're putting them in a situation where they're going to be exposed to some idiots. And it's, it, you know, to these two idiots, the, the, the son and the daddy. And you don't really know ultimately what's going to happen and how this kid is going to behave because he doesn't have to adhere to any rules. He gets to do whatever he wants to do. Any kind of stupid thought that comes into his big head, he can act on it and his father will be his full supporter. So that's going to leave you in a position where you and you alone are going to be responsible for protecting your daughters and your household. So for you, what I suggest is that you tell him, well, first, find some place for you, you and your girls to move to. Then you tell this guy that you don't think this is going to work out because your girls are getting older. They're noticing the difference. Um, it's very important to you that they grow up with a sense of responsibility, accountability, and understanding of how to fit into society um, as, a, as, a, as a positive contributor to it that you want them to be around people who model that kind of behavior, not that people just do, you know, whatever they want to and just adhere, they have really no moral compass. And you, you know, really he has to understand, it doesn't matter what color the kid is. The kid could be green with orange polka dot. That part, I don't care, he'd be striped, you know, I mean, paisley printed, whatever, whatever color he is, uh, the world is getting tougher and tougher. I mean, kids now have to worry about stuff that we never even had to think about. I mean, you know, kids, you can't even see little kids playing outside anymore because, you know, the parents are too afraid that somebody's going to drive up and snatch them. We never had to worry about stuff like that when I was a kid. We'd be outside all day, all night. You know, well, half the night till we had to come in and have dinner. But it's not like that anymore. Society has changed and our children have to change with it. We have to do what we need to do to put as many protections in place for them as we can. And you... It's very important, especially for young black males, that they learn how to fit into society right now. What this guy is thinking is that the society is going to bend to his child's will. His child's going to get taken out. That's what's going to happen. Either you fit into society or you become an outlier and you end up, you know, wandering the streets homeless or in prison. That's or in a funeral home. Those are the three choices when you decide that you, you know, want to do something else that puts other people at risk. Those are the three ways that you usually end up. So, um, this is really a sad thing, but yeah, get them little girls out of that situation as quickly as possible. I don't care if you have to borrow some money from the bank, get them out of that house. All right. Deb Cooper from, well, this was, these were some doozies. Uh, on, for survivingdating.com, you can visit the blog over there, the YouTube channel here, Debsterism. And uh, if you have an advice question that you'd like to submit, um, at the top of the YouTube channel, there's something that says Get Advice. You can use that. It will take you to the Surviving Dating form, and you just fill that out. It has releases and a little information about you that I would need to. It kind of helps me focus uh, my response. Because, you know, whether single, married, male, female, age, age and stuff. I mean, all of those things come into play when I'm formulating a response. So it's, it's always good information for me to have. But um, you guys keep the questions coming in. Thanks for your support. My Patreon supporters, you're wonderful people. And everyone who's been buying my cookbook, I really appreciate that as well. And you can visit that blog, too, for some great recipes there. My, my vegan crab cakes are on hit. They're on fire. They are just the, the crap. The, yeah, they're really good. Let me just say that. Watch my language. All right, I'll see you guys in a couple of days. Deb Cooper signing out.